So the first thing which we saw as part of validation was declare constraints. We understood what are declare constraints and we saw how exactly declare constraints work. Yes or no? The class, the, uh, the before the last class, we did declare constraints. Today, our focus is understanding what is edit validate. What is edit validate? Edit validate is advanced type of validation. We will go for such validation when we know that it is not the given rules, for example, OPJ validate and declare constraint are not sufficient to manage. We are not able to manage the validations using these two rules. Then we go for edit validate because it is slightly advanced. You won't be you won't be using uh, these uh, the edit validate very often very hardly you'll be using but uh, creating one and using one is slightly tricky because you will have little bit of code involved in this thing however to understand that we will try to do some exercise today and we will understand so you must be wondering what is the difference then why would i go for when would i go for uh, you know declare constraints when would i go for uh, you know obj validate when would i go for edit validate so if you see in declare constraints or the constraints rule which we worked on in this rule you you saw that there was dependency validations right there was dependency see validation in the sense like the our example a is equal to b plus c whenever b or c changed a was getting affected yes or no whenever b and c change a was getting affected it's exactly similar to the example where we saw the amazon's cart the total field is read only however whenever you modify the quantity it keeps it keeps changing when you know these such sort of implementation is there where dependency is involved between fields then you will go for declare constraints for to perform dependency validation does it make sense right however in declare constraint you don't have to call it from anywhere right you don't have to call it from anywhere once you create this rule whenever you are using those properties this automatically got triggered we saw that yes or no yes did we see that right perfect so we saw that automatically it was getting triggered let's see today the server is kind of acting weird just want to see if it is coming up small some exceptions let me give it some more time no problem perfect so declare constraints is that other the other rule which we saw yesterday was the validate rule the validate rule is nothing but a rule which is under process category and it belongs to rule obj validate class this is straightforward validation right straightforward validation where for example if the name first name and last name are say uh, are you know are same then we are validating it using some functions right the validation is straightforward straightforward validation right and we are doing it on submit so this is a server side sort of a validation yes or no whenever it did submit we saw that it was triggering the error messages did we see that we are using some functions to uh, we use functions to achieve this validation we used functions to compare the first name and the last name the age to see if the age is between these two we are used number functions yes or no also we de described the expression using some functions we saw that right
one restriction with this thing is when you call this only one form will be validated why can someone answer this thing only one form will be validated when you call this when it's triggered only one form for example yesterday we are working with the customer details section only that form was getting validated why is that yes very good so we explicitly called it only on that flow action we didn't call it on any other flow action so the only output of that assignment was that flow action on any other sections we haven't called on that flow actions on the other flow actions we haven't called so at one time only one form is getting validated does it make sense guys and also we have to call this explicitly this the validate rule has to be called explicitly to get the validation triggered yes or no we have seen this we did this and we saw this how can you call this on flow actions validation tab right there's a validation tab on that you can call and also in a activity in activity also i can use a method called like obj open obj browse there is obj hyphen validate where i can refer this method in the step and then i can expand and provide the obj validate rule i want to call we saw this yesterday perfect so the next piece which comes is edit validate when will we go for edit validate in rare cases it happens that you know uh, the existing functions are existing functions which they, which are present which we saw yesterday existing functions won't suffice your requirement existing functions won't have suffice your requirement you could have a requirement where you have to validate for example a student's id a student's id might have alphabets as well as numbers yes or no so something like this one one si zero six cs zero zero one one is a number this is alpha numeric sort of approach yes or no this is they have alphabets as well as numbers that is what is called as alpha numeric but to validate this i sometimes you might not have a function there is no you might not find a function which is there which will validate this student id validate if this student id is alphanumeric you have to validate it but there is no function as such you can compare numbers you can see the length for example if you have to identify if the length is this much you can do that however to identify if it is alphanumeric you know if you have to validate if this is for your college for example these two characters are let us say after one the s and i belongs to let us say your college you have to validate on every student id you have to validate if this is for your college and also you have to identify if it is computer science cs is computer science in the same way i can have another id which is 58 si 06 me zero zero nine zero zero eight let's keep it one si only okay that will be constant so the college is same but this is for mechanical but we have to identify stuff like this this stuff to be identified we, you won't be able to achieve this with these normal validations you know with it with the obj validate you won't be able to achieve why because there might be some function which is not available right now and you may have to build a custom code for that 
very rare it doesn't happen often because most of the validation they have covered and pega keeps releasing you know latest patches where it keeps updating the new functions however if it is not there you will have to build your own why because you have to satisfy the customer's need does it make sense right to do that you will have to use a rule form which is edit validate edit validate will help you to achieve such requirements edit validate will help you to achieve such requirements how you can use custom code to build these validations i very badly want to show that but okay this is also this validation is you can perform perform both client and server side validations with this with this particular rule you can perform both client and server side validation and this is of type uh, edit validate edit validate belongs to data hyphen model category or data model category it belongs to data model category this particular rule belongs to data model category what code will you be writing here pega platform to start with is built on java if you see the 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 below engine code which they have written though we see only rules and forms and drag and drop and stuff but in the base it is built on java so it uses you have to, we have to use we need to use the java here java to build this rule it's not too complex it's basically you know true or false sort of code i'll walk you through it's nothing fancy nothing you should be worried about you know uh, it uses the java code to you know access it and pega also has some built in edit validate rules pega also provides some built in edit validate rules we will see them so today we can try to implement a requirement where for example um, you want to build a validation if we want to show error message let us say a requirement show a error message if um, let us say age is less than 25 you know i want to show a message telling minors are not eligible of course we can do this with uh, our obj validate rule also but i'll show you using code how exactly you can achieve the exact same thing which is happening in validate rule if you have to do it using edit validate how we will do it and same way if uh, age is greater than 75 say seniors are not available the seniors are not eligible is what i want to show okay and then to do that we will need some java code uh, how does it look is something i can write and show but let us see if the server is up let's try to access it from a different browser and see local Post colon eighty eighty slash 
Oh, perfect. That is good. This is good news. Now I should be able to. This is really good news. Okay, sometimes it is slow to start. Don't worry about that. <coughs> So we'll see how exactly we can use edit validate to that. Okay. Mm. Perfect. So before we do that, let's see what we have already implemented in terms of validation and then we'll jump into edit validate. Mm. The application is loading from I want to change. Oh, you're in alpha. Perfect. <clears throat> how many of you have already installed the software and have been following up on what we have been doing i know a few of them who have already done but just want to know who is this like because you know you have investing your time and money uh, it should also make sense that you benefit of it and the only way you can benefit is by doing I can keep talking, but you know, only until unless you guys, you won't be able to benefit out of it. Okay. Let's create a work object and see how exactly is my um, application responding to validations we'll see declare constraints obj validate and from there we'll build a edit validate rule not a super high important topic for interview or something just you need to know that these three types of validations are there edit validate has uh, some coding which is needed to build that uh, no one is going to ask you how exact what exact code are you going to put there and stuff like that don't worry about that but having to understanding of this thing is very good. Let me open the flow. Sorry, the flow action. Of course, you can access the flow from you know from your work class. You can go to the work class and also access. I'm trying to open because it was in my recent. I'm just clicking here. It should be opening the flow for me. So last two classes we have to we have worked on declare constraints and obj validate. So we'll see that it gets triggered and we'll verify that here. loading perfect so we have a new work object created for us and then we got a form where we will have to provide some details so right now i'm not providing anything i'll just say submit and you will see that the declare constraint rule and the uh, obj validate rule will be triggered see the first error message here is because of my obj validate where i have told i'm validating for first name if the first name and last name are same throw me a throw an error to the user tell him that he has to enter a different value for first name on the last name i have used declare trigger in the declare trigger i have specified if the first name and last name are same just inform the user that it has to be different okay that is one thing which is getting triggered of course if the age is uh, it has to be between 20 and 70 this is something which i have defined on my validate rule however the uh, obj the declare constraint has not been triggered because i have not provided i have not chosen anything here let us say for example i choose male and i give his ages as 16 okay and you will see that this will be triggered you'll see there's one additional message you should be seeing here telling that see age must be 21 this is from my declare trigger 
this is from my obj validated this is from my declare trigger this is from my obj validated yes or no guys see i'm opening my obj validated which we created yesterday where i am checking on my first name if the first name and last name are same then i'm telling enter a different value for f name this is my obj validate and for age also if age is less than 20 and if it is greater than 70 or it is greater than 70 we am telling that age must be between 20 and 70 perfect this is what we have implemented and declare constraint also is something which we have done where we are seeing um we are doing dependency validation if first name and last name are same then it is required that the first name and last name should be different if it is not met then i am throwing an error on the last name property showing him an error this is a message which we are showing right same way for gender if he is male it is required that he should be greater than or equal to 21 and if he is this is not met then i am showing a message telling that age must be 21 if it is a female and the age has to be 18 or above if not i am showing this error message now let us see how exactly we can implement edit validate in this particular flow to do that we need to create one edit validate tool what did we say we said that this belongs to data model category yes or no i see there is something called as edit validate under data model category from the rules explorer the records explorer i am able to see there is something called as edit validate under data model category let me click on that so many edit validate rules which are already existing this is what pega is providing you by default these are already available okay let's pick something from here yes we do have one for to check if it is an integer yes most of these if you go through like you know you will get an idea how exactly you have to implement okay there is one called is non-negative integer let me open this one let us verify what is my px obj class also very important you need to when they say validation rules you need to know what they are which rule they are referring to to understand that you can of course tell them the class which belongs to c control f px obj rule edit validate the one which is under process category is called as is belonging to rule obj validate however edit validate belongs to rule edit validate easy to understand it. remember right this one is rule obj validate this one is rule edit validate the class to which it belongs very important three types of validations in pega declare declare constraints rule obj validate rule edit validate now we were able to identify what all what are the uh, edit validate rules and we are trying to implement one of the solutions let us try to implement that right now i do have a rule here for example i opened this is non-negative integer one existing edit validate rule like i said you will need java to you know write that this particular rule this is an existing edit, rule edit validate we will not use this we will try to create one for ourselves okay and what i will do i will try to i want to use this rule to build my rule i'll say save as here all you can do is you can right click here and do create and also you can create a new one or you can just save as this one anyone like that and then you can give your own name let us say i want to validate the age so i will give the name as validate age auto insurance perfect create and open so I don't have to write the code the java code now the code automatically comes in because i am saving a doing a save as 
examples because for example if you are writing by yourself you might make some errors so it's good to take some base code which is already there take it as a reference okay take it as a reference perfect so now in this uh, there will be a certain area where you will have to modify okay uh, let us say what it is doing it's integer okay don't worry what it is doing i'll just show you the piece of code you will have to modify to see our changes let us try to modify this guy mm. so i'm modifying from here if i use double quotes uh, two forward slashes that means i'm putting a comment here it won't be executed modifying the code here Again, you don't need to know how to do this, just an understanding that this also exists and this is also a way you can build your application. That's what we are trying to achieve here. So all I did was I changed the number to 25 uh, because I'm checking for minors here. If IL input in the sense, this input is nothing but the age which the user provided. If it is whatever it is, okay, if it is less than 25, what do I want to, want to do? I want to show a message. To show a message, there is a function. Hmm. I think it is the property. On the property, when you know uh, when you have to show it on property, you have to use this. The property dot add message. Minors not eligible. perfect return this thing and for 75 also we have to do the same thing i just have to see copy this guy control c and control v and i have to say 75 if greater than 75 because if he is greater than 75, I don't want to. Control Z, Control Z. Senior is not eligible. Let me save and see if it looks okay. So nothing. All I have done here is I just modified all this thing is doing is it is taking an input what is that input it is telling give me give me an integer input is what int stands for integer it is, it is taking some input and it is trying to fetch that uh, ex extract that in it's parsing that and it's taking that input whatever input it is and then they are checking if that input is less than 25 you know then I want to show a message, minors are not, minors not eligible. If the input is greater than 75, I want to show seniors not eligible. This is what I am saying here. Don't worry what it is, what, why is the syntax, why it is written like this. This is Java. That's a plain answer. So you don't have to know this. But all I did was I used the existing rule and then I modified it. If you have such, once you go into job and if you encounter something like that and if you are not able to track it or understand it, and if you have any issues, you can reach out to me. I will help you understand. No issues. But you don't need to know. No one is going to ask you this. What exact syntax are you going to use there and stuff like that. All we are doing here is, at a high level, we have to understand this. Edit validate tool exists. We can use that also to do validation. And you can build your custom validations here. Yes or no? Here we are doing doing some custom validation. We can For custom validation, we can use this custom code and we can build it here. Right? We need to know that there are three types of validations. Of that, this is also a validation. Now we defined this perfect. But as we call the OBJ validate on flow action, we should also be calling this somewhere. So to do that, before that, what I will do, I'll first remove the OBJ validate so, so that when we try to run this thing, we will be able to see this validation. So just we can keep both just to make sure you are able to see distinctly. I'll remove that validation. To remove that validation, I'll go to flow action because we have defined it here. And then I'll remove it. And on the, from the validation tab, I'm removing it and I'm saving it. So whatever we had called yesterday, we have undone that. So 
our application shouldn't be throwing those errors anymore see the first name property shouldn't be validated anymore is it getting validated no right perfect so all we'll do we'll try to create a new work object and then track it don't worry about that so we created all we have done so far is created a edit validate rule saved as an existing uh, edit validate rule called it as validate age and then we added like few lines like three four lines where we are saying if the input is whatever input it could be the age here you know is less than 25 then tell that it is minors not eligible and if the input is greater than 75 tell that seniors are not eligible but where do we call this the edit validate rule is to be specified at a certain place what is that place we'll try to understand that like unlike obj validate which gets called from the flow action this edit validate rule has to go as part of the property which is being validated as part of uh, should be part of the property which is being validated what property are we checking here guys age right so let me try to find the age property i'm going to my work class expanding the properties do i have age here i opened that property now when i open that property i don't see any place on the first tab there are multiple tabs in the property rule form general advanced specifications and history if you see there is the advanced tab coming back again so edit validate rule once you define it you will have to call it somewhere and that has to be called on the property for which you are trying to refer this edit validate rule right now we are doing it for age and i want to call this on that property to do that i have to look go in search of that property right now my property is sitting in the work class and that is the age property i'm opening that and when i open the rule form i get general and advanced and specification and history go to the advanced tab and look for use validate drop down do i have one here guys do i have one here how do you call a edit validate rule could be a very important question to you how will you call it i will go to the property where it has to be referenced and i'll call it from there yes or no right i'll call it from there val age let's try to look for it is it available guys see us phone number is a specific type of format for that they have this thing us zip is specific format for that they have this thing ssn ssn is like aadhar of us for that they have a specific quality most of them are already available you don't have to worry but you need to know what they are doing to validate that to do that i'm showing you this all you need to know is where is this rule called this is the configuration right uh, what what are we doing here nothing fancy opening the property rule and telling okay i want to use this validate rule that's it create no you can't call perfect so use validate and save this guy So we are using this property rule form to refer to our edit validate. Whatever is our edit validate. So using this. Now let us go and see if this thing is being referenced in the flow. I mean, if it is getting called when we are trying to create a work object. I'm going to my customer flow. And say run. We find it on age right okay
does it make sense guys though if you see the declare constraint condition is met here if i change this to 20 the declare sorry the declare constraint as well as the edit validate both should be called yes or no Are we able to understand guys how edit validate can be utilized to perform validation all we have done is created a edit validate rule modified few lines to say that okay check for 25 and 75 and if 25 is true throw this message so if 75 is true throw this message is what we have said and then of course we have you know uh, referred that onto the property which is being utilized right so we understood that edit validate rule can be called from the property right now we from activity also you can call these rules the edit validate rule can be called from activity also how can we do that we'll see that uh, also as part of this thing Nothing fancy, just know how you can call it. You don't have to use it. I don't think uh, there is a specific requirement as such, but you need to know where exactly you can call this particular rule. You know, I'll just add a step and let us look for validate method. obj validate we saw yesterday you can't call the edit validate using obj validate because it's not part of obj validate plain and simple there is something called as page validate is what i remember see there is something called as page validate specific to a page you will be building a edit validate and you will be calling that there is also something called as I think property hyphen page validate and property validate. These are the two methods using which you can call edit validate rules. Let me save it so that it can show me what goes as part of it. You can call the based on a page and you can refer that page and here you can refer the property as soon as you refer that property the validate rule will be present as part of that property yes or no guys right I don't have to know how exactly this is done just giving you understanding of where all can you call these validate properties these validation rules declare constraint don't have to call anywhere just declare it whenever that property gets modified that will be triggered forward chaining yes or no it is happening in our application obj validate can be you can have multiple properties specified there for a given form and in that form you can validate all the properties pretty much most of your validation can be covered there you know hardly you will be needing these anyways if there is any requirement where you have to go to this you can do that also on a property panel you can go and specify your edit validate build your edit validate and call there also you can refer you can call that from here these are the different options which you need to know as part of validation pega validations are done can be wrapped up with these three rules this is what was supposed to be conveyed as part of validation was this understood guys perfect so we have completed a decent amount of uh, you know uh, content has been covered so far so from here on more you know more technically um, you know um, interesting topics will be uh, coming ahead so just hang in there and try to practice as much as possible so you can you know 
understand it much better uh, and of course you know uh, bring out your uh, doubts and we'll try to solve them in the class uh, if you guys have any questions i can take them